early in the year. This is George and, and see as good as anybody. He can stand back up doors here across the interstate for the first time in his life. He can see through his eyes. It's, can anybody say praise the Lord for that? Praise I've heard him say pray for me. Selena, when she was here, he's healed her. How much is that worth to an individual that he heals like he did her and like he healed you? How much is that worth? Mm -hmm. If you put a price on it, there is no price you could apply to that. But that's what God's done for it. And that's what he'll do for you. You believe it. That's what you come to. He will be there for you. But you have to ask him. Remember that one man was at that uh, pool of Solomon there. He was there 30 years. He had went there 30 years to be healed. And Jesus walked by and said, Would I be made whole? He said, Been coming 30 years, or so to speak, you know, just giving you a random talk. And he's been here, coming here 30 years, hadn't been healed yet. Somebody beats me down in there. Said the angel comes to stir up the water and people get healed. But he said somebody always beats me down to get down in the water. And Jesus said, rise up and take up your bed and walk. He come after 30 years and give him a gift to healing. And we thank God for that, don't we? Now we got a lot of people in the hospital. Bobby's out there and uh, Brother uh, Ike's out there. And I don't know how many more is out there. It's full. I'll tell you one thing. The hospital's full. And I'll tell you another thing. The funeral home's full. You might wonder why church is not full. It's because people don't care enough about church to come. And uh, But they will care that they'll come when they say, Oh, God, if I just tell them not. And we've tried our best to make them know, haven't we? But if I'd have just known how it was going to be, I would have been different. And I believe they would. But some way or another, the devil's got so much power that he blocks that out of mind. And they'll say, well, I got all I need. I don't need no more. How do you know you got all you need? He said he'd give you pastors and leaders and teachers and that they could preach a word and teach that you may be perfected. In other words, there must be something like it and he wouldn't have given you all those teachers. But you've got to realize where the truth is at. Hear the truth and obey the truth before you ever get perfect. And so I'm just preaching a little bit along that way. But it's good to see Anthony come in. He's been with his mother. Uh, I'll have to hand him credit for that. He's been with her days in, days out. Missed his job and everything. But he, he's done it. And he's done the duty of a child to his parents. And he's been there. He's come got his dad to How many appreciate somebody like that? Take him wherever he needs to go. You know, there's a lot more to church than just going to church, isn't it? You know, he said, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Didn't he say that? And to love one another, pray for one another, suffer with one another. He said, do that. And we appreciate Sister Mary very much coming out to church and sitting three hours or more. I don't know how long she was there, sitting there with Bobby, and it just tickled Bobby to death as she came out and had prayer with her, and that Holy Ghost fell, spoke through her, and that guy came in, and I'm saying he had tears in his eyes. His name was Brother Chris. Now, there was Brother Chris that used to preach at Tim's Gap, but he was related, must have been related to these people from Steep Rock. And uh, so he's a registered nurse to our man, and he's her nurse. So she gets an opportunity to tell him about the Cresses. She knew him. Her daddy had a pastor named Brother Cress, and she's getting a chance to talk to him about the Lord. She's already told him where we are, and he's asking what the church was at. So in adversity, we do meet people. You know, who would have thought maybe we went out to that hospital to meet this man? But you don't ever know, Brother Benny. But you have to suffer adversity with Christ if you're going to win people. And uh, so we meeting somebody out there that knows all about holiness, all about the church of God, all about what we believe. And uh, it's even got down to the place where we can't believe we know each other. So 
So it's good to have Anthony with us this morning. But let's stand and pray if you have a request, and let's stand and pray that God would heal. And I thank God for George Tipton this morning. And got the good. How many thanks God? Just say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is His day. This is George's day. Yes. George, we just give you this day. So God been wonderful to you. All these years, he said, he ain't had eyesight, but this morning, God, has get, they've had the surgery, and he can see across the street. He can see way off real good. His glasses and they can see far enough. But I thank God that he's able to do that for the first time since I've known him, since we're just a small boy. And he's able to see like you are. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Give the Lord another hand. I think we need to give the Lord. Oh, Glory to God. George, you, we've asked him and he did it. So he used the word. So what? There's a lot of people out there that God's using to help us. We're in the world, but not of him, but he's using the world to help us. How many people don't meditate? Raise your hand if you don't on meditate. Maybe you don't even know you're on meditate. That means on that hospitalization that we got. But if you're on it, God has got the world in it. But it helps you don't. I ain't getting no amen much on that. Maybe you ain't on it. I'm on it. I'm glad I'm on it. I couldn't have nothing done for what? And neither could you, I'm not sure, have anything done in the operation. Or anything without it. And so maybe it'll meddling a little bit, but uh, Medicare is everywhere and Medicaid, so thank God for that. And if you have a prayer request special, let's remember Bobby for one, uh, she's going to have to have another operation on Monday morning at 8 o'clock. Lord willing, I'll be out there. And uh, Anthony will be there. Somebody will be there, I hope. And uh, so. They're going to have to go in and get her gallbladder out. And they said she's had it over 20 or 25 years. That she suffered with that. And I never did check it out. But it's been all these years. And that's called it, these, those uh, gallstones. Is, is packed in there so tight they couldn't even get them out. Get all of them. She's got six more left. Six more left in the ducts. That's just in the ducts. That don't mean bladder, does it? Right. Coming out Monday, Lord willing. So I thought you'd take it that much so you can pray for us. You need your prayer. And Sister Mayor prayed out there in the Holy Ghost space where I always pray in. This guy come in and looked like he's crying, but he's used to this type of church, so I don't doubt the Holy Ghost will listen to him outside yeah. of her. And uh, so Sister Mayor, one thing about her, she's not ashamed of that Holy Ghost. I'll tell you that. So I'm going to do her. And uh, we felt good about it yesterday morning. The Holy Ghost fell on me in my chair, and I wasn't even praying. Uh, I come up praying. Well, after he fell, like he did, and he come up praying to the Lord, glorifying him. And it was an assurance to me that she was going to be all right. I believe she will be. I believe it was God. Sister Mary, I don't know where you was praying or not. Somebody was praying for me. I don't know who it was. But uh, I had a great blessing from God. I love to get them like that, so I thought I'd share that with you. That's what church is for. Bear one another's burdens, and I believe y'all do. Bobby's a good woman. Uh, she's had a lot of pain through the years that she hasn't been able to do, but she is a good person. And uh, so she has uh, slept last night, and she slept the night before, and she couldn't get her awake. Some of them thought something wrong with her. Five years, maybe. So we thank you, God, for that. So I got a lot to pray for this morning, and I want y'all to share that with me. All right, Sister Lane, you got unspoken. Let's 
to remember her. Lord, let's remember her to some deep prayers. All right, unspoken, but lift your hands in. Brother Gary, would you lead us, please? Holy, divine, and glorious God, we thank and praise you for another opportunity to be in your house. Oh, to worship you, to praise your holy name. God, we give you the praise, the honor, the glory for what you've done, for what you're doing. We thank you for what you're doing right now. Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I trust you, Lord, to do exactly what you know is right. Oh, God, we give you the praise, honor, and glory for what you do. We thank you for your blessing. Thank you for the presence of the Lord that we feel right now. We thank you, God, for each one that's come out. Be with them, Lord, in a special way. Oh, lift them up. Hallelujah, God. Keep them in your love and in your care. Oh, God, I yet high. But George, we thank you, God, that he can see today. Oh, hallelujah to God for sight. Thank you, Lord, for eyesight. Glory be to God. In Jesus' holy, precious name, we glorify the name of our God. For thou art good. Hallelujah. You're so good, God. You're so wonderful, hallelujah, to our King. Glory to God. All right. You may be seated in your Lord. Actually, let's remain standing. Let's sing this chorus this morning. <clears throat> Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou be seated. We're going to go ahead and jump in to the service a little more. And <clears throat> I was talking to Dad, and I haven't really talked to George about it. And there ain't nothing like him mangroves putting you on the spot, but we're going to put Brother George on the spot a little bit this morning. Um, I have a request all the way from Atlanta, and you know from who, to sing a song. <laughs> and uh, we'd like you to, she wants you to sing, uh, if you can, known only to him. And uh, and uh, I actually got the video going back there, so this is going to go to Atlanta. I posted George's uh, song that he recorded several years ago, well, that I recorded on him a couple of years back on my Facebook, and I told his story briefly and about our conversation the other day. And uh, so many people's lives have been touched from from that news and that testimony yeah that's exactly right so you come on up and uh, I just want everybody to just get a frame of mind of just thanking God and praising God the rest of the service let's just in your own way let's just as we listen to George and just thank the Lord thank the Lord and it's you know everything's in his time and he chose this time to guide the hands of the doctors and uh, 
And as we know, that, uh, George had said this could have went either way. It could have went good or it could have went bad, and God let it go good. I want to say something. Uh, go ahead. Thursday, Thursday afternoon after I had my surgery, I knew what it was like to be led around when you couldn't see because I was patched up. Only the right eye was, was, was open and I couldn't see much too good. And every time I wanted to move from the house or something, I went over to my brother's house and he, he would have to get up and lead me through the house because I couldn't see. And then Friday morning we were going toward the doctor's office and we were sitting in the car and I couldn't see and I was thinking about it and the Holy Ghost came down on me. Hallelujah. It was so real. He said, you're going to be able to see Hallelujah. He said, I've got a victory for you. I went in that office. Of course, they had to lead me in because I couldn't see. And I sat there. I said, I'll probably have to wait 20 or 30 minutes, maybe an hour. It wasn't five minutes. She said, George, take them. I went back there. And two minutes later, they peeled it off. The doctor standing there. I could see every little bit. Details from his appearance, his complexion. I reached out and put his neck. So thank God, thank God, for 55, 56 years I've lived on this planet. For over 50 of them I've been bound by the full vision. And I know I still have a little trouble getting stuff far enough away to see it. That's normal for someone my age. But Today I can stand here, I can see the vehicles run up down the interstate, I can see the trees over there. I can see the church and everything in it like I haven't seen it in 35 or 40 years. You see, then I had to have a plastic lens, now I don't. There is a plastic lens inside, it's a quilt, but it's not visible in the way that most of them. And yes, it does have a model and zero in it, got it in my pocket. God is absolutely the reason I see it. It's not the hands of the doctor. The doctor was just an instrument that the Father used through the working of our Creator Son, Jesus Christ. For he said, without me, you can do nothing. Hallelujah. It's by the hand of the Creator that I stand up here and able to see clearly and see now pray for me. I'm going to try to praise him. He's worthy. I'm not the best singer in the world, and I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but I do the best I can. Mm -hmm.
Um, if you would, George, I'd like you to take maybe five more minutes before Dad preaches. And uh, it, I know you can remember, I just, I was, Sister Mary was at the hospital when we talked, and I was telling her some of the stuff you said, and, you know, we got so tickled because we was tickled with you. I won't tell about the house. You can tell that if you choose to. But uh, it just, you know, what we've all seen for years and taken for granted, he really just saw again for the first time the other day. And he, he described one thing he was talking about looking at. It said it looked like a beautiful picture. Oh, yes. And, you know, we walk out and we see the beauty. Yes. Sir. But I just can't wrap my mind around how he's seeing it right now. What we've took for granted. So if you would, take a few minutes and just share some of those first day stories. No matter if it sounds crazy or funny or if it was a possum running across the yard. Just tell us some, some of the, what you well, experienced. One of the things I noticed more than anything else is the vivid color. I said, Lord, somebody, somebody's changed the color level and they've fixed the, the saturation and they've fixed the hue. Because now I can see when all three of the chips in my eyes are working like they're supposed to. I was just kind of relating it back to the camera. So I used to take that big camera back there and I'd set it right there and I could see Anthony clearly through the viewfinder. That was the only time I ever had a clear image of him when I had to be the camera in front of me. And when I got home, I was looking at my house. Of course, I could see all the dirt and everything I had missed that I couldn't see before. I thought, my goodness, well, this is a mess. And I looked around, and everything was... I was sitting there on the couch talking to Anthony on the phone, and I looked around the living room. It's like looking at a glossy photograph what everything I could see was just as clear as if I was looking at a glossy print of everything. And I thought, this is how people see. I didn't know how people, I didn't know people could see like that. I mean, I've never actually had clarity like I have now. Not without having some plastic in front of my face. And even then it was not clear. A lot of times things looked different. And the size of everything changed. When I couldn't see through those glasses, everything looked small and distant. Now without them, everything is much closer. And you look on this mirror on the car and it says, items in the mirror are much closer than they appear. And now I know how that is. And God is wonderful. We, I was thinking about that song I just sang. Yes, the day I was going out there for the surgery, I was laying there on the gurney when it was going to take me in. And that song was going through my mind. Known only to him are the great hidden secrets. And it says we know not what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. It's a secret, known only to him. And I was laying there, and they was worried about my blood pressure. You know, they do that. They were giving me something. They had a little venous needle in my right arm. And they were giving me something through the IV for my blood pressure. And it was, it was a, you know, it was going to be. I'm laying there on a gurney in a hospital bed with my only eye fixing to be cut off. And they was worried about my blood pressure. My goodness. Well, it, it's still there, you know. It, 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 uh, when they put me to, they put me to sleep and I was totally unaware of it. I was asking them when they wheeled me in there, I said, aren't they going to put me to sleep before they numb my eye? He said, we've already done that. I said, I have no idea. I didn't have no clue they had done it. He said, it was a minute and a half I was asleep. And he said, during that time, my blood pressure was virtually normal. So, you know, that just goes to show that the reason I had a little bit of elevated hypertension is because I was sitting there with a lot of anxiety. But I do want the church to pray that I don't ever have to be admitted to it for that because that's expensive and there's a lot of trouble with it because it never when they give you what you need, whether it work or not. And so the best blood pressure medicine I know is the Spirit of God. And he can take anything that's wrong with you, and in a minute's time, he can make it clear. He can fix it up. You know, I've waited 35, 40 years to be healed. 
I kept begging God. I said, Lord, I need help with my sight. I can't see anything. And everything was yellow and cloudy looking. And God knew all the time I was praying, hallelujah, what it's going to look like. When I stood there looking out the door yesterday, and everything was just as bright and clear. And the, the colors and the little birds, I could sit there and watch a robin walk across the